So in this video, we'll start talking about compositions. Because the inverse trig functions are not actually inverses of the trig functions, their compositions only work the way you'd expect them to up to a point. And I mean, we've already seen this, it's not new material, but... The arc sign of the sine of x equals x, but only when x is in this interval and the arc cosine of the cosine of x equals x but only when x is in that interval and finally the arc tangent, the tangent of x, what do you know? It equals x, but only if x, not that interval, my writing outpaced my head, only if x. is in this interval. What if you um did the composition in the opposite order? Well, the sine of the arc sine of x equals x. And traditionally, your textbooks will say, this also has a restriction on it. This is only true if x is between negative one and one. I always find that a little dis or it may be deceptive, strong, a little misleading. The arc sign is only defined for these values of x. So for any value of x, for any value of x where we can write to this down for any value of x where the arc sine of x is defined, the sine of the arc sine of x equals x. Similarly, the cosine of the arc cosine of x equals x. And once again, this is kind of a fake restriction in the sense that for the arc cosine of x to be defined in the first place, x has to be in that interval. And the this sort of this idea that I'm giving these restrictions, but they're kind of fake, reaches its, uh, its summit when we write down that the tangent of the arc tangent of x equals x, but only if x is between infinity and negative infinity. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, well, this is every number. It's not, not a real restriction. 
So we can look at examples using this. Let's find let's find the arc sine of the sine of pi divided by three. Well, good news. Pi divided by three is in this interval. It's between this interval. I so used to using the document camera where I can point and have you understand it. Um, the act the x we're looking at is in this interval. So the arc sign and the sign simply cancel out. And we get pi divided by three. But what if we have the arc sine of the sine of five pi? divided by six. This requires some thought because five pi divided by six is not in this interval. It's greater than pi over two. So here, once again, reference angles are going to come to our aid. Five pi over six is in the third quadrant. It's bigger than pi over two. It has pi over six as a reference angle. And that tells us that the sine of five pi over six and the sine of pi over six are the same. Um, except that maybe one's negative and one's positive, and that is not true here. Pi over six is in the first quadrant. Its sign is positive. Five pi over six is in the second quadrant. Its sign is positive. The sign of five pi over six is the same as the sine of pi over six. Ergo, the arc sine of the sine of five pi over six is the arc sine of the sine of pi over six, but pi over six is in the interval we need. It's between negative pi over two and pi over two. So that arc sine and that sine cancel, and we give us pi over six. So the arc sine of the sine of five pi divided by six is not 
five pi divided by six. It's pi divided by six. Again, this arc sign and this sign will only cancel if this number is in the right place. Otherwise, you have to use reference angles. And I sort of default to, um, sort of default to the sine. I've done a few examples with the cosine in this section. Let's do one final example with the tangent, just for a little variety. Let's find the arc tangent of the tangent of 7 pi over 6. And we'll start by observing that 7 pi over 6 is too big for these two things just to cancel out. Um, the arc tangent and the tangent only cancel when x is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, this is significantly bigger than positive pi over 2. So we'll use the same trick that we used in the last frame. We'll try to find a reference angle such that the tangent of 7 pi over 6 is equal to the tangent of the reference angle. And the reference angle is where we need it to be. That's our goal. It's the same thing we did in the previous example. Seven pi over six is in the third quadrant. I never know um, how much time I should spend on statements like that, if it's obvious or not obvious. So that is pi. And pi is 6 pi divided by 6. So 7 pi over 6 is just a little bigger. And we get into the third quadrant. So... This isn't, this is too big. We're looking for a reference angle. The reference angle here is pi divided by six. But if you rush into this, you run the risk of making an error because the tangent of pi over 6 is not the tangent of 5 pi over 6. How do I know? Well, this 5 pi over 6 is in the third quadrant. The... um. Wait, I was the one who made that error. I um thought I wasn't thinking clearly, and I thought that um one of these would be negative and one of these would be positive, but that is not the case. The cosine is negative, the sine is negative. A negative divided by a negative is positive. So I am not going to 
start the video over. I'll just lump having made that error. And now we'll finish the problem. The tangent of 5 pi of 7 pi over 6. What am I doing, man? The tangent of 7 pi over 6 is the same as the tangent of pi over six. So, work with me, Zoom. The arc tangent of the tangent of five pi over six. My gosh, I really want this problem to be 5 pi over 6, don't I? The arctangent of the tangent of 7 pi over 6, which is the problem I am trying to do in spite of repeated errors, is the same as the arctangent of the tangent of pi over six is pi over six. So a problem that took me more tries than it really ought to have. But again, we look at the number that we have here. We recognize that it's not where it needs to be for the arc tangent and the tangent to cancel. So we look for a reference angle. We look for an angle that is between where it needs to be, between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, that has the same tangent. In this case, the tangent of pi over 6 is the tangent of 7 pi over 6. So because these are equal, we can replace the tangent of 7 pi over 6 with the tangent of pi over 6. And then, because pi over 6 is where it needs to be, the arc tangent and the tangent cancel, and we get our solution.